Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today I'm playing around with a little bit of an experimental design of a popper and I'll get into exactly what I'm trying to do with this design but you'll notice that it's another rainy Sunday here in North Florida so we won't be getting out on the water. If this is your first time visiting the channel I'm Franco. I'm a professional engineer and a lure designer and an avid fisherman and I make these videos to show how an engineer might use a little bit of physics and engineering to sort of enhance the art of lure design and lure making. So this is meant to be a simple sketch of this lure. And the key element to this lure is that the popper face is ported. You can see that there are holes going from the very back of the popper face to the sides. And my expectation is that when I move the lure with a little bit of force, there's going to be a mixture of air and water shooting from these ports. And it should create a lot of surface bubbles and a lot of commotion. Some spray going up, not just popping forward, but spray going up and back. So you can see on the drawing that this is a port and it has a slightly upward sort of angle and I drilled it that way on purpose. So if things work as I expect, uh, the water should shoot up, not just back. Tricky part was finding enough meat to hold in a uh, tie-on eye for the front. You might see it up in there. And so everything in purple on this drawing uh, are hidden lines or lines that you don't normally see. The inside contour of the popper lip, the drill out, these are twisted hook eyes. I've already weighted it the way I want to and that is slightly back so that it still floats level but it has uh, most of its mass towards the tail. That's why I left it sort of thick so I could get a lot of mass towards the tail so that when I cast it, it should go uh, quite a long ways. So we'll get into the paint booth now and get this thing painted. And I think I'm going to go with uh, bunker colors, sort of greens, some gold, and maybe even a little stenciled uh, fin on the side. All right, let's get started. So before we get started painting, uh, you notice that it's obviously been painted with a silver paint and I've just used some spastics and it's a product that I've used quite a bit and everybody knows that's been watching the channel uh, that it starts off looking really cool and then it kind of lets you down at the end. It does kind of dull out after you clear coat it but it'll give me a good sort of subsurface to mix transparent paints on and get those uh, sort of transitional colors. All right so one of the first things I want to do is sort of establish some color inside these ports because I just think they look cool. They look almost like uh, like jet exhaust ports and I'm going to spray opaque yellow from uh, the throat here out so it sort of oversprays into this little notch. I'm using testers opaque yellow and hopefully this works. All right that's kind of like what I was expecting. All right now I'm going to use this Wicked Paints pearlescent red. All right, that gives a pretty cool looking little transitional orange to red. And then the throat is nice, a uh, nice deep pearlescent red. All right, so now I'm going to add some transparent orange and that'll give me a nice gold hue. I'm going to do it probably from the eye down. And this way, when the green blends with it, there'll be a slight sort of uh, bluish green in the middle of the lure. All right, 
I'm gonna let this dry a little bit, but the next step is transparent green. And I'm using just a Createx transparent bright green. I'm gonna spray this over the top and have it overspray down to the side. Now I'm gonna hit it with a darker transparent green on top and again, I'll let it bleed down just a little bit, not quite as far as that one. All right, so this is really the first time that I've uh, painted directly onto spastics chrome. And uh, I gotta say, I'm not really impressed. I usually put a mid coat on it of some kind of clear coat to protect it a little bit. I thought, well, maybe I'll go directly with paint and see if uh, it behaves differently. But actually, it, it, um, it's, it's a little blotchy. So now I'm gonna go ahead and darken the very top a little bit with another transparent uh, paint. It's uh, called Midnight Blue, but it's mostly like a dark charcoal kind of color. I'm gonna go ahead and give the eye just a little bit of a halo around it. Putting out very little paint. All right, now I wanna give the hole just a little bit of an outline so it looks kind of like a fin. And this is kind of an experiment. I don't know how well this is gonna come out, but. There you go, that looks kind of cool. And I'll give it a little darkening right here. All right, so I've placed it on the lure bow because it's just a little easier to hold on. Now I'm gonna clear coat it, well, actually mid coat it with some clear polyacrylic and let that dry. And then I'll be giving it a really good solid UV resin clear coat. But first, let's put some eyes on it. So what do you think, red eyes or silver eyes? Or how about gold? I think the gold blends in and I think I'm gonna go with red. What do you guys think? Let me know what colors you guys would have preferred. All right, that's it for the polyacrylic. Uh, I put a couple of coats, it's nice and shiny. I cut this stuff by volume by about 15% with just distilled water. So I'll clear coat this thing in about a half an hour. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna use the last of my uh, Aluma UV clear coat here. Hopefully there's enough in this bottle. You know, I almost never uh, share like a purely experimental lure like this. Typically I'll do a bunch of experiments and if they work, uh, then I'll share it with you guys. But I thought, you know, why not? It's a lure that's at least interesting to look at. <laughs> we'll see what it does out on the water. It looks pretty good, I didn't miss any spots anyway. And I'll probably give it another coat. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and close the hatch here. And I'll let it turn probably five or 10 minutes to let the bubbles pop. And then I'll turn the lights on. And it should take about eh, an hour and a half to get a good solid set on that really thick coat of UV resin I put on there. So I'll see you in about, eh, let's call it two hours. All right, well, it's been more than two hours. It's been like two days. And if you look out that window, it's a nice sunny afternoon. It's after work and I'm gonna try to get out there before the sun gets too low. Well, here it is. Well, it's not the most beautiful lure I've ever made, uh, but it wasn't meant to be a beauty queen. I don't really need any more tackle box princesses, right? So this is really more of a prototype. Most of my prototypes, I don't even really paint. I either leave them white or paint them white and black so I can see movement a little easier. So I'm gonna put some number two hooks 
on it and then we'll go down to the water. So let me just toss it in the water and see how it floats. That's about right. Perfectly level. Let's get a good cast out there. You can't really test the lure with four feet of line out. So hopefully it will at least work as a regular popper. He definitely has a decent pop. Now it probably doesn't have the pop that you'd get if it wasn't ported. Just a, a regular hollow mouth would probably give it a deeper pop. Check out the slow motion footage. Let me know what you think. Even after looking at the slow-mo footage, uh, I can't really tell if it's doing anything extra other than popping like a regular popper. But I have to say, I like the look and it certainly casts a long way. So I'm gonna call it a partial success. And I can't wait to get out on the beach and fling this out beyond the breakers. Hopefully we'll scare up some blues or some Spanish mackerel. I'll catch you guys on the next video.